Welcome back, Fanfield family. Today, we're going to look at the Fierce and Noble Warrior, Red 13. This is an extra special episode because it's covering the favorite character of my first ever subscriber, Just Spencer 36 who has commented on every single video I've ever released. This one's for you. Red 13 is a member of an almost extinct species of sentient, quadrupedal wolf-like warriors from the center of planet study in the Final Fantasy VII world, Cosmo Canyon. With vivid red fur, a flame on the tip of his tail, and countless scars and tattoos, Red 13 is very different in appearance from the rest of the party. At the time of recording, he is the only playable party member in the core Final Fantasy series that walks on four legs. Red 13 is a calm, collected, analytical, often quiet individual. He prefers to listen rather than speak, and as such appears pensive. When the party returns to his hometown, Cosmo Canyon, it is revealed that while chronologically he is in his mid to late 40s, his species has such longevity that he's only roughly the equivalent to a human teenager, around 15 or 16. In fact, his species is so long-lived that after the credits roll, we see Midgar, abandoned and overrun with nature, and Red is still alive and well. Initially, Red 13 promises to go as far as his home with the party, and then he'll go his own way. But after a series of events and a discussion with his grandfather, Bugenhagen, he makes the decision that helping Cloud and his friends save the planet is the goal he should aspire to. I'm going to drop a spoiler warning here. Go to the timestamp on screen now if you want to avoid the story details being spoiled for you. Upon arriving in Cosmo Canyon with the party, it is revealed that his name is Nanaki, and he is beloved by the people of the canyon. Red believes that this is where his journey with Cloud ends, and while sitting with everyone around the fire, he discusses his parents, his mother who bravely fought the invading Gi tribe, and his father Seto who ran away in fear. Bugenhagen, upon learning that Red bears such animosity for his father, instructs Red and Cloud to follow him into the depths of the canyon. While in these caverns, Red and Cloud fight the stagnant spirits of the Gi that died beneath the canyon, ultimately making their way to a chamber in the far back, where the spirits have coagulated into Ginatak, a massive warrior ghost. With the destruction of the undead monster, the way is clear, and Bugenhagen leads the group through to the other side of the canyon, where the truth about Nanaki's father is revealed. Seto did not run away. Seto stood guard over the canyon, not letting the Gi take even a single step into Cosmo Canyon. Even when the Gi's poisoned arrows turned his body to stone, he remained, standing guard over his home and the people he loved. Nanaki's mother had made Bugenhagen promise to never unseal the cave, to let Seto be forgotten, and upon seeing the warrior's death that Seto had endured to protect what was precious to him, Nanaki makes a declaration as well. He will see to the planet, save it, he will be a warrior worthy of living up to his father. He is Nanaki of Cosmo Canyon, son of the warrior Seto. At these words, the petrified body of his father sheds a few crystallized tears, and to honor his father, Nanaki howls at the moon.
As Cloud and his team prepared to leave Cosmo Canyon, Red rejoined them, ready to live up to his warrior heritage. Red 13's weapons of choice are headdresses. Unlike other party members, his weapons are not actually rendered on his in-game model. He's a great fighter. Due to his high speed stat, he can often get in more attacks than other party members, and while he is fairly balanced in terms of physical and magical damage, his low MP means that he's often assigned to a physical attacker role. That said, his impressive magic stats do allow him to be a potent magical fighter when the need arises, especially since many of his weapons boost his magical damage. His ultimate weapon is the Limited Moon, which deals more damage the more full his MP gauge is. This means that when the Limited Moon is equipped, he's best for physical attacks, as any magical effects will ultimately take away from his raw damage. While Red is a close-range fighter, he has one weapon, the Hairpin, that is actually long-range, allowing him to attack enemies that are out of reach for close-range fighters. His limit breaks have a bit of diversity. Some are direct attacks, while others boost the party's effectiveness in battle. His first level 1 limit break is Sled Fang, which targets a single enemy and inflicts three times normal damage. His second level 1 limit break is Lunatic High, which grants the party the beneficial haste status, speeding up the rate of their attack gauges, and also raises Red's defense by 50% for each of his allies that are still alive. His first level 2 limit is Blood Fang, which damages a single target for 1 and a quarter normal damage and absorbs some HP and MP, both equal to roughly 25% of the damage dealt. His second level 2 limit is Stardust Ray, which hits the enemy party 10 times, choosing targets at random for 5 eighths normal damage per hit. His first level 3 limit is Howling Moon, which gives Red Haste and Berserk, a status that makes the afflicted character attack automatically as soon as they are able. It also boosts Red's attack by 60%. His second level 3 limit is Earth Rave, which attacks random enemies 5 times, dealing 1 and 7 eighths normal damage per hit. His final limit break is Cosmo Memory, which summons a massive beam for 7 and 13 sixteenths normal damage to all enemies. Cosmo Memory is the first level 4 limit that the party can acquire, found sealed in a safe in the Nibelheim Mansion, a safe that will become very relevant when we cover one of the two optional characters in a later video. It doesn't do quite as much damage as other characters' final limits, but it's accessible very early. Red 13's music is simply called Red 13's theme, and there are a few variations on it used at different moments. His theme is altered very slightly for the music of his hometown, Cosmo Canyon, and, perhaps my favorite variant, The Great Warrior, which is played near the end of his excursion at Cosmo Canyon. I'll share a bit of both his theme and The Great Warrior here.
Red has become a hit with many fans for his unique appearance, quiet, thoughtful personality, and noble nature. Parallels to Native Americans have been drawn. He proudly wears war paint, beads, and feathers, and his weapon of choice is the headdress. Even his real name, Nanaki, was chosen by the designers because they believed it sounded Native American. Thanks for watching. Next time, we'll take a look at one of the more peculiar characters in the party. If you enjoyed this, you're in luck. More is on the way. Please consider leaving a like, a comment, or subscribing. It takes two seconds for you and really helps the channel out. See you in the next one.